in addition to the if statement, another one of the core programming functions that you'll use in JavaScript is the for loop. So uh, for this example, we're going to use the same page as we have the last time. There's a wrapper div with five paragraphs inside of it, linked to our script file. And in our script file, the basic setup is the same. We've got our window on load function. The on load event listener is calling the init function. The init function is searching for the first paragraph on the page, adding an on click event listener to it, and calling the function add word. And here's our function add word. There's nothing inside the function just yet. What we're going to do is we are going to have JavaScript add the word JavaScript at the end of the paragraph. So if we look at the text right now, the first word paragraph, second word paragraph, and so on, we're going to go in here with JavaScript and do this. We will add a space and the word JavaScript inside there. So as the person clicks on it, each time they click on any one of the paragraphs, we want to add the word JavaScript inside there. All right, so that's that's what we're going to do. So let's go over to our JavaScript file here. We have the on click for the very first paragraph, and let's look at the basic syntax of what we're going to do inside the add word function. Using our keyword this, we can reference that paragraph that was clicked, and I'm going to use the inner HTML property. Now this is a property built into any HTML element. It gives you the HTML that is nested inside of it. It could be text, it could be HTML, it could be a combination of HTML and text. But whatever it is, you can take that property and say, I'm going to add to it. There we go. So, inner HTML plus a space and the word JavaScript. There we go. So, this inner HTML, whatever the current value is, I'm going to add a space and the word JavaScript to it. The compiler will look at this side of it, or rather the interpreter will look at this side of it. It'll take those two things, put them together, and then set this dot inner HTML equal to the current value plus space JavaScript. All right, so jumping over to the browser, I'll reload this page, and if I click on the first one, there's the word JavaScript. Click again, 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 as many times as I want. It's going to add the word JavaScript every time I click on it. Now, I don't have that yet on any of these. So, back inside here. This function, very simple. And wouldn't it be great if we could use this same function for all the paragraphs? Well, in uh, one of the previous examples, we saw that we could just add a line like this for each one of the paragraphs. So if I were to do this, that's going to work. That will make all five paragraphs work to call this function, and JavaScript will be added to the one that we click on. So if I jump in and refresh it quickly, and you can see as I click on all the paragraphs, it works on all the paragraphs. However, I did have to write five lines of code to make this work. If I had 10 paragraphs, I'd write 10 lines. 50 paragraphs, 50 lines of code. I don't want to do that. I want to speed things up. I'm, I'm a good programmer, so I don't like to waste my time writing the same thing over and over and over again. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to find out how many paragraphs there are on the page. Let's say var paras equals this. Document get elements by tag name p. All right. Now the variable paras will contain all those paragraphs. So paras is going to be an array. That means I can ask my array how many elements are inside of it. The length property of any array will tell you how many things are inside of it. This will tell me five. There are five paragraphs inside the array called paras, which is great because 
that is how many times I wanted to write that line. Document get elements by tag name p sub zero dot on click equals add word, and then instead of zero one and then two and then three and then four. All right, so I've got the number of times I want to do this. Now I'm going to write my for loop. That's the basic structure of it. The word for, two parentheses, and then two curly braces. And then inside here, I would put this. I would put the, th the command that I want to do. I can actually write this. Paras is the same as this. This is what I had here before. So this array, I'm going to look at number 0, and then I'm going to look at 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. So I need to do something to replace that. I'm actually going to, I'm going to put a variable inside there. I'm going to use the letter i as my variable. And this variable is going to change for me. It's going to be 0, then it's going to be 1, then it's going to be 2, then it's going to be 3, then 4. So I'm going to be attaching this onClick listener to all of my paragraphs because I put it inside of a for loop and I'm going to tell the for loop to change the value of this variable and to run five times. Okay, so how do we do that? Three things that we need to put inside here. First one, we have to create a counter variable. That's what that variable i is that we're using inside here. i, right there, i is my counter variable. I'm setting, I'm declaring it as a variable, I'm setting it equal to zero. That's my starting number. That's what this first little section followed by a semicolon is. This is your starting number for your loop. Next, I need to check and make sure that I haven't gone beyond that maximum number. So as long as i is less than numpara, that was the number five. Remember our line up above here? Right there. NumPara is the number of paragraphs, five. So as long as this counter variable is less than five, so zero, one, two, three, four, any of those numbers will work. And the last section here, the third and final section, we have to say that we want to add one to the value of i each time we go through the loop. That's what this i++ plus plus means. If I had written i minus minus, that would mean that subtract one from the i value every time we loop. So starting off at zero, as long as i is less than five, add one to the value of i every time you finish the loop. So this is going to be i equals zero. We hit the end of the loop, one gets added. Then it becomes i equals one, then i equals two, then i equals three, then i equals four, then that's it. We've hit four. When, the, when we're four and we add one to that value, when we come back up to our test, four plus one is five. So is five less than five? No, it's not. So at that point, the loop ends, we come down here, we're done. So, I have set up my variables here to say, uh, get all the paragraphs, find out how many there are. Here's my for loop. Inside my for loop, I'm repeating the same code over and over and over again. And I'm just using that variable in here to reference different elements. Finally, our function, one single line to set the inner HTML. All right, let's jump to the browser, reload it. And there we go, it works for all five of them. Even though the command is only written one time, because it's in the for loop, it can run again and again and again for any one of our paragraphs, as many times as we want to click. If I had 60 paragraphs, this would still be working just as well for 60 paragraphs. Just to quickly demonstrate, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to paste and paste again. So I have 15 paragraphs now in my page. I am not going to touch the JavaScript at all. I will jump back to the browser. There we 
go. Reload the page. There's the 15 paragraphs. I have not changed the JavaScript at all, but this still works. So I've written some code that will now adapt to however many elements I put on the page. And that's the fundamentals of a for loop. So maybe a little bit confusing the first couple of times you write it, but after you've done it a couple of times, you'll find that this is a very, very useful construct.